In this short video, we're going to show you how to use the Vector Texture Tool. This tool is very powerful in that you're able to create all sorts of textures from wavy abstract textures to faux wood grain effects. So in the Design tab, you want to come under Create Vectors and use this icon here to create vector textures. And when you click on that, that will open up the Create Vector Texture form. So within the form, we have various options that we can control what our texture will look like. And we're going to work quickly through the form, just talking about what each part means. So first up, we have the angle. So the lines that we create with this tool are created at an angle, and this can be set to a value anywhere between negative 90 degrees and plus 90 degrees, where zero degrees, the texture will run parallel to the X axis. And you can specify an angle by typing a value in here, or you could simply use the slider uh, to choose an angle of your choice. Okay, so I'm just going to set that back to zero so we create a texture that's parallel to the X axis. So next up, we have the ability to adjust your line spacing. So the line spacing controls the spacing between each one of those lines that will be created. At the moment, we've got that set to one inch. So when we create our texture, there's going to be a one inch spacing between each one of our lines. Underneath, you'll see that we have this variation slider, and this controls the degree of variation within our line spacing. I'm going to keep that set to its minimum as I don't want any variation in this example just yet. Yet. Then we have the wave parameter settings, and this is where we can specify the amplitude and the wavelength. Now, the amplitude, this sets the height of the wave. Uh, so a larger amplitude means a taller wave and a smaller amplitude means a shallow wave. And we can do that by adjusting the slider. Or again, what we could do is we could just look at um, adjusting the value itself. So for example, we could just put one in there. And then next up, we've got the wavelength. And this sets the length at which the contour's uh, shape repeats itself, okay? So it's the, the length between each one of those waves. So a bigger wavelength gives a longer wave, while a smaller wavelength gives a shorter wave. So let's just go with six inches in there. So going for quite a, a high-ish number, uh, we'll put six in there. And then we can move on to the next setting, which is your noise. So this noise slider, this controls the randomness uh, applied to the texture settings. Now I want a nice smooth wave, so I'm just going to keep the noise set to a minimum uh, for this example. We have the ability to place vectors on a layer. So when you create your texture, we can tell the software, actually, I want to put this on a layer that I want to call, uh, let's say we call that one wave. And then when you're happy with your settings, you could go ahead and press preview. And then you can see the result of your texture applied here within your view. And so if you're happy with the resulting texture, you can simply go ahead, press OK to apply that, and that will take you out of the form where you're then able to select your texture vectors as normal vectors. Now it's worth noting here that if you do have a vector texture pattern that was created using that vector texture tool, when you select it and go back into the vector texture tool, it will remember the settings that you applied for that particular texture. However, if you have made edits to the vector texture, then this tool will no longer be able to recognize the original settings that you used. And then we can make further edits to it and then the software will update it. So for example, let's set our line space into 0 0.3 and then preview that. We can take a look at what that looks like. Happy with that, so we can go ahead and press OK. And there we have a texture that we've just created using that form. So let's have a look at some other options within that form. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to switch off the wave layer. I'm going to make sure that layer one is the active layer. We're going to go back into the vector texture tool. So let's have a look at the effect of changing the angle. So I'm going to type in an angle here at 45 degrees. Let's just go ahead and preview that to see what that looks like. So we've seen earlier at zero degrees, it's parallel to the X axis. Now at 45 degrees, you can see it is actually going in the 45 degrees. And if we up that to 90 degrees and then press preview, you should see that parallel to the Y axis. 
Okay, so I'm just going to put that back to 45 there, and then we'll go ahead and press preview. And then working our way down the form, okay, so line spacing, let's just increase that ever so slightly to 0.35. Again, I'm just going to keep my variation down to the absolute minimum for now. And now we're going to look at adjusting the amplitude. So we're just going to increase that ever so slightly to 1.5. And um, we'll just go ahead and preview that so you can see how that's changed there. And then in terms of the wavelength, we'll just keep that at uh, 6. And you can see we've got this kind of step effect. Uh, which is all down to the uh, the angle here along with the other settings that we've put in there so I actually like this texture so if you like one uh, then the best thing to do is then put that onto a layer that you can relate to and then save that out so we're just going to call this one step uh, and then again we'll just preview that okay that and then what we should see is it's now on its layer called step and we can see that there we're just going to turn the visibility of that layer off and we're going to go back to layer one whilst we jump back into the texture tool whilst we look at some other settings that we've got here so now let's go for an angle, let's say, of 60 degrees. And then for our line spacing, let's increase that to 0.4. Now this time we're going to look at adjusting the variation. So let's just preview this uh, just for now as it is. But now what we'll do is we'll just look at increasing uh, the variation here. And then we'll preview that. And you can see what's happening here. So we're creating a maximum space of 0.4. But we're actually being quite random and we're saying to the suffer I want you to kind of randomize it as long as we don't go past 0.4 but each one can be uh, a value less than that and so we're seeing uh, quite a lot of variation there which gives you a nice natural random sort of textures let's just up our amplitude this time so let's make that eight and then we'll go to our wavelength and we'll increase that as well. Let's make that 16 and then we'll preview that. So we're going to really increase the amplitude so that you can see we've got real big waves now and the wavelengths are, are extremely uh, high there. So you can see we've got some nice effects and that's, that's a really nice effect there and that would make an awesome uh, wall texture. Again, let's just leave that as no noise, but let's give this a name uh, to put this on to a layer we'll call that layer swirl preview that and then we'll go ahead and press ok and you can see it's created that there for us on the layer that we specified right then let's just turn that layer off go back to layer one and then click back into the view here and we'll go back into the vector texture tool so we've seen how we can create kind of abstract abstract kind of waves, just normal waves, stepped sort of waves. Now I'm going to show you how we can easily create kind of faux wood grain effect, which would be perfect um, to, if you use a kind of a V-bit tool on it uh, in order to cut it out to create that sort of faux wood grain effect. So this time I want to kind of keep it very close to the X axis. So let's just bring this right down to say two degrees here. Uh, and then our line space and again we want to kind of really keep that close together so I'm going to bring that down to 0.15 because at this time I'm still going to keep that variation because wood grain is varied it's natural so we're going to keep that variation at around the kind of 75% mark on our slider amplitude we're going to knock that right down okay so we want a very small we don't we almost we don't even want a wave so we're keeping that super small there uh, and then in terms of the wave uh, we're going to give that a very long wave uh, we'll do that at, at 18 and then this time we're going to look at introducing noise so let's just preview this as it is without the noise okay so that's what that looks like now if we introduce noise let's say we set that to medium and preview that you can see the noise there it's kind of like a chatter and that's perfect for this sort of effect so if you want uh, the noise that's the tool to use in order for you to get that if you don't want any noise slide it back to zero and you're going to get a nice smooth line so i feel like that's a good uh, kind of faux wood effect and i think if we threw a v bit on that that would look really nice so again let's just give that um texture its own layer and we'll call this one wood grain uh, and then we can go ahead and preview that and then go ahead and press ok and that will apply that there to the wood grain layer 
So let's go back up to our layers bar. We're just going to switch off the wood grain layer and we're just going to make layer one the active layer. We're going to go back into the vector texture tool. We're going to look at another example. So I'm just going to go through the form, have an angle of zero, a maximum spacing of one where we put the variation right at its minimum. Uh, amplitude of one and we're going to go with a wavelength of six and a noise of zero. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we'll preview that to see what that looks like. And now at this stage let's say we wanted to create a large textured wall panel but we're really limited by our machine bed size or the material size to cut it in one go. So what we'd have to do is we'd have to divide this job up into multiple tiles. So we need to ensure that the pattern flows smoothly from one tile to the next. And the way that we could do this is by creating a tileable texture. And in order for us to have a tileable texture, we'd need to ensure that our texture runs parallel to either the X or the Y axis. And so we're going to set our angle either at zero or 90 degrees. And then the wavelength must be divisible into the width of the tile that we're creating. So our tile at the moment has a width of 24 inches and we've got a wavelength here of six. So that divides into 24 four times, which is great as that means that we can create multiples of the same tile and we'll be able to stack them left to right uh, and top to bottom and the pattern would flow equally and smoothly into each one. Alternatively, we could set our job to the size of the overall desired texture pattern uh, and then divide that up into multiple tiles manually using the tools in the software. So looking at the texture that we currently have, we're going to show you that they are in fact tileable. So let's just put this on a layer and we're just going to call this one tileable. And then we'll go ahead and preview that and then we'll just press OK here. And then I'm just going to zoom out and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those vectors and then with them selected like so I'm going to hold to down control and then I'm just going to take this point here and I'm just going to move it over and then we're going to snap it over to the end there and we can see that the pattern is blending smoothly into the next. And what I can do is I can take all of those vectors and again this time I'm going to select them into transform mode, hold to down control on one point here and I'm going to snap it to the top over here. Uh, obviously didn't hold control properly so let's just control Z there and then again let's hold down control and select those uh, vectors there and let go and we can see it's not quite snapped so let's just move that over. There we go. So you can see there that we've snapped that in place and we've got a tileable texture there. So uh, that's always useful to know how to do that should you want to create a very large piece that you want to be tileable. Okay then, so let's just press F to fit that to our screen and then we're just going to go and switch off this layer. We're gonna go back to layer one and then press F again to fit that to our screen. Now, if you wanted to create a texture that was confined to a vector boundary, you can also do that. So for example, if we drew out a few stars like so, I'll just bring that down there. And then if we selected those stars and we go into the vector texture tool, what we can do is we can look at um, altering various parameters in here and you can put your settings in there and as long as your vectors are selected you could go ahead and preview them and you'll see that the vectors are then created within the bounds of the vectors that you currently had selected. It's worth noting that if you just cancel out the texture won't be created and um, because you didn't apply it. Right then so we're just going to take those vectors and we're just going to delete them. So there we've seen pretty much how you can create vector textures using that texture tool. So I'm actually going to switch over to a different file now. So looking at the same uh, textures that we created. However, I'm going to demonstrate how powerful this tool is just by using a profile toolpath. So let's take a look at the wave profile. So we're going to double click to open up this toolpath. And all we're doing is we're cutting down 0.1 using a quarter inch ball nose where we're machining on those vectors. And if we go ahead and preview that and we can see what this looks like, you can see we've got a really nice effect there. 
So let's just go back to the top view there. We'll close out. And now we're going to switch on to the step uh, layer. And we're going to go into this step profile here. Uh, so again, cut depth of 0.2, 90 degree, half inch V bit where we're machining on those vectors. Let's just go ahead and preview that. So we'll reset that preview, preview this one, and we can see the effect of that using a V bit this time. So you've got nice, uh, nice kind of uh, sharp swirls in there. Really nice effect. So we can just reset that preview. We'll close out. This time we'll just switch on the swirl layer and we'll go to the swirl toolpath. Again, cut depth of 0.2, 90 degree half inch V bit machining on those vectors. And if we preview that, we can preview this toolpath. A really nice, I like this one. Nice big swirls there. Great, let's just switch back to the top there. And then we'll reset our preview, close out there, and we'll go to the wood grain layer. So see how those vectors and using a V-bit tool, just machining at point one on those vectors, creates a faux wood grain effect. So we'll preview that and you can see straight away that looks perfect. And so you can see how powerful uh, the vector texture tool is in unison with the toolpath. Now, to learn more about the actual profile toolpath, how these were created, then I recommend that you watch the how to use the profile toolpath tutorial video. Thank you for watching.